Hey, pretty people. If you're a reader, which I'm assuming you are because you clicked on this, but I mean a big, 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 oh crap, big, 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 big reader. Like you buy purses based on how many books you can fit in them. How much for this one? That'll be $15, ma'am. Okay, but how many books can I fit in it? Hmm, two Dashners, one Sprocket, one Pear Lenny, three Colfers, and one Gaiman. I will take that. So yeah, you take your purse and you take your book out with you, everywhere, in public. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you bookworm. But have you no shame? Keep your weird addictions at home where no one can see it. And when you do go out in public, you will be asked questions. It never fails. They will come and you will be asked. Asked what? What? What questions? The slightly annoying, marginally patronizing ones. You like to read? Why? TV's much quicker. It's not real. Can't you do anything productive? Or you get my mother. Well, I'm glad you can at least make imaginary friends. It's, it's not a question. It's just disappointment. Anyway, I monologued enough. Show don't tell. Here are my top five questions that annoy readers more than buying a book that's been dog-eared. Not your own dog ears but someone else's greasy, crumpled dog ears. Journey with me. A I don't... Okay, the letter's M. What do you guys got for fictional characters? Nothing. Nothing. I chose MacGyver. MacGyver's a real last name. It doesn't count. We're talking about the guy from the show, not some... I chose Murtog. What? Murtog. That's a made-up word. Do we need to Google this? He's the best character in the inheritance cycle. He's... Oh, she can name a fictional boy, but not one real boy. It's a really good book. You guys should give it a chance. Yeah, I just don't get how anyone could read fiction. I'm sure people read fiction the same way you play golf. It helps them unwind. The man who said this is literally addicted to The Walking Dead. <laughs> what do you call that? A documentary? A romantic comedy, perhaps? This is a weird question. How do you defend something? How do you defend reading something that you just enjoy? In the words of my idol, Sam from iCarly, it's like TV in your mind. It's an adventure, and you're just glad to be along for the ride. When they ask you this, it's like your intelligence is being questioned. Just because your book looks something like this, epic, people think you can't handle a big kid book for some reason. An encyclopedia, a thesaurus. I'll have you know, I faked reading Harry Potter in first grade, and people thought I was a child prodigy. Question two, what's it about? This one, this one is definitely a me thing. I don't, I, it may even be a you thing, but, just watch. All my friends are heathens, take it. Hey! Hey! Oh gosh, I have no idea who this is. You're Casey, right? Yeah. And you're a guy, I think. Yep, Casey. You know, unisex spelling Casey. Oh yeah. So what you reading? Oh good, something I do know. Finding Audrey. Cool glasses. What's it about? Crap, where do I even begin? I mean, I barely like this book. We don't even know what caused Audrey's anxiety, and the dang book won't tell me. I mean, I get it, you don't have to explain yourself to others, but my curiosity is not sated in gosh, Linus. Why does she like him? Oh, he does a smile. His little orange segment smile. His personality is just a smile. And apparently a boyfriend is all you need to cure anxiety and depression, because like after he shows up, she struggles with nothing. The family is funny, but everything else, gosh. What do I tell him? I don't want to scare him away from reading permanently. <sighs> It's about a girl, Audrey. She has major anxiety, but she's getting better. Huh. I mean, I could read you the back of it if you want. No, I'm good. Bye. Wait, come back, please. I have words to say, I swear. When you're minding your own business and you're just sitting by yourself, pondering what you just experienced, and someone rudely interrupts your thought process and asks you this intruding question, what's it about? And you have to remove yourself from the world you have ingrained yourself into. To look up at this outsider and explain what you've been through. The emotional strife. And you've been just so submerged in the plot. And suddenly it all just drops into your lap. And you can't sort it out because if you're me, if you have my brain, and there's just so much swimming inside of it, 
It's just noise. And you can barely answer normal questions as it is. You can't talk about what you love because it's all in your head and you can't take it apart to give them a simple answer. You want to tell them everything about the book you're reading, but you can't because you're too excited. Yeah, that's me. Number three, three, three. I don't get you. Well, I don't get how people can whistle so well. No, 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 no. You've read that book at least ten times. At least twelve, but yes. How can you do that? You've already read it. There's no surprises. You know everything that's gonna happen. Well, good wine is worth the second sip. Or a twelfth sip. Shut up. You're going to get drunk. Shut up. I tell them this. It's just like me watching a movie, and they always seem so shocked. <gasps> is it really? Yes, it is. Only better. My favorite part of rereading is going back and seeing all the foreshadowing I missed. Like how when we first meet Gale and Katniss in The Hunger Games. They're together, and they're eating bakery bread. But Gale stuck an arrow in the bread. And most likely, Peta made the bread. So that hints to some relationship conflict already. Because how many times have we known Katniss to at least consider shooting Peta? At least four. Number four. Hey, what? Are you doing anything? Yeah. Were you gonna help me alphabetize m &Ms? Why would I do that? Well, you're not doing anything. I'm reading. Yeah. Contrary to what it may look like, I'm doing something. Are you aggravated enough? You ain't aggravated yet. Because now we're getting to the final fatal question. That old destroyer of faith in humanity. Yeah, ain't she cute? That's me. An 11 year old chubby Casey. On her way to convince her friend to read one of her favorite series, The Rangers- The Rangers Apprentice! Yeah. It's like this totally amazing adventure about this boy named Will, but he's an orphan. He's so scrawny that no one wants him and his apprentice. Like he's too small to take care of the battle horses. He can't be a knight. No one wants him as a blacksmith. Oh. But this really gruff and mean but secretly teddy bear-like ranger named Holt takes him in as his apprentice. And he learns about bows and arrows and camouflage. Oh. And he gets to take care of his horse, and the horse's name is Tug. Oh. oh, and we also get to see Horace. Horace is a knight, and he gets to make his sword go swish, swish, and stab. You are going to love it. It's filled with so much adventure. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Am I supposed to read the prologue? Why am I asked this? Why is this a question? It's part of the story. Read the prologue and the epilogue. <laughs> I mean, look at this. They're so short. There's information that you need in them, though. You can spare the moment. Who is this reverend? Mm -hmm. My head really hurts, though, from banging that mug on it. That, that wasn't smart. Read prologue, don't. Bang them on your head. Well, that's all I got. I'm glad I can only name five that have happened to me. Thank my lucky stars, even though there is some fault in them. Ha! Oh boy, I need help. Have you experienced any of these? Have you been asked any annoying reader questions that I completely missed? If you have, comments are down there. I want to know. Fist bump for first videos. Thanks for making it awesome, everyone. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep turning pages. I'll keep that. Is that, is that my new catchphrase? I probably will, but bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. I love you. Bye. Don't let the last thing they see be your awkward smile.